good evening. Thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Rajneesh sir, and thank you for giving us insights in this uh, difficult times. And uh, I would be discussing a case where intracoronary imaging helped us get through a lesion that we had all uh, earlier failed also. Uh, so my case is a 52 year old male who had dyslipidemia. The first history that I would be presenting is January 20, is February 2021, approximately 15 months from now, when he presented with the past history of first ACS in Jan 2020, a uh, second ACS in Jan 2021, and he presented to us in Feb 2021. So he had two past history of ACS, one one month back and one one year back, and he had severe LV dysfunction and severe MR. And the coronary angiogram documented uh, almost uh, RCA was free from any significant disease. And we could see both LAD as well as left circumflex having total occlusion. The left circumflex is filling retrogradely both from the left as well as right injection. And even the left anterior descending has a faint uh, anti-grade flow as well. So we presume that the LCX lesion was probably older and LAD was probably more recent. And we, after giving a very soft LCX attempt, we moved on to the left anterior descending artery. And with the help of feeder wire, uh, we were able to negotiate the total occlusion and we deployed a DES 3.5 into 48, post dilated it with a 4 into 10 NC balloon and got this final result for LED. That was Feb 2021, 14 months back. Since then, he became better, but uh, class 2 dyspnea did persist. And the subsequent story is of the past month when we took the patient again for a check angiogram as well as uh, re-attempt for the left circumflex CTO. So this is the angiogram that shows a patent stent of the left anterior descending artery and the left circumflex has total occlusion. The problem with this left circumflex total occlusion is that we have a very significant two side branches right at the stump and the stump is somewhat ambiguous it is also blunt and the occlusion length being more than 20 millimeter and being it a retry lesion the jcto score counts up to three and with this intent our first thought was to get a good proximal cap puncture so we took a iwas from the side branch we placed a, a work horse wire in the side branch that is the towards the atrial branch and we took the iverse catheter into the atrial branch and slowly pulled it back this is the iverse uh, localization of the proximal cap we slowly pulled it back and with angiographic correlation it's not co-registration we try to correlate angiographically and as we can see in the still images we can see in the far field the left circumflex lumen uh, uh, adjacent to the catheter and right at the proximal cap, we can see even a calcium plate at the site of total occlusion. So that made us prepare uh, about choosing the wire with high penetra penetration power and possibly we might land up in a sub space with this uh, intent. So we took directly, we took a Miracle 12 wire and tried to, with IVAS co-registration uh, or maybe co-identification with the angiogram, we inserted the Miracle 12 wire. And just after we crossed, we again correlated it with the IVAS and we could see the intended site of entry uh, as expected on IVAS. And the wire was seen entering in the sub space adjacent to the total occlusion. So this was the uh, angiographic picture how we entered the total occlusion and the ambiguity was partially resolved with the use of IVAS. Uh, subsequently, after we uh, moved ahead for approximately 10 to 15 millimeters, we found the wire to be too free and then we de-escalated the wire from Miracle to Gaia second. And despite that fact, we could notice that there was a bifurcation uh, approximately at the distal cap and our wire was going out of the vessel architecture at this point of time as seen in this angiogram. So we had entered the subintimal space and we couldn't track it back to the true lumen. And we took a rotational angiogram at this point of view to delineate the uh, true lumen and the distance from the true lumen in various views. 
and we found a significant difference of more than 0.5 millimeter in some areas. So uh, we did try to change the direction of the directional uh, tip of the Gaia wire and we were slightly successful and we got a better rotational angiogram, a better uh, sweep that documented more closeness towards the true lumen. But again, we were still in the subintimal plane as seen. So uh, we advanced the microcatheter a little bit, only up to the point before bifurcation till the area that we were sure so that we don't lose any length that we gained with the advancement of the miracle wire just proximal to the bifurcation and started redirecting the wire with more support. But again, we were still in the subintimal plane and we tried subintimal plane tracking towards the true lumen, but we were going into the superior division of OM, but again in the false lumen and without uh, we took the micro as far as possible and tried to introduce a knuckle wire at this point of time so that we could slightly uh, track within the subintimal plane and just beyond the total occlusion if we could take a re-entry uh, re back into the true lumen. But we again failed and at this point of time we realized that we are still in the architecture of the vessel and the subintimal distance from the true, true lumen is now less than 0.5 millimeter. So at this point of time, we thought that we might uh, uh, try to negotiate it with the Gaia wire, but again, it was very difficult. And the micro, uh, despite the advancement of the micro, we could not uh, reach the true lumen. So at this point of time, we thought of switching over to the Stingray balloon. As you can see, the Stingray balloon is deployed at the site of uh, the last area where we realized that the, we are 0.5 millimeters away from the true lumen. Uh, this is the basic idea of the Stingray uh, balloon and the guide wire. And it shows, uh, I'll show, uh, it's a self-orienting flat wing balloon that inflates in the subintimal space. And various techniques have been described like stick and swap, double blind stick and swap, and a double sting. And we should not uh, uh, try long time of parallel wiring before we try this stingray. So as we can see in this um, two angiograms, we can see in the right side, we can see a railroad sign for the stingray balloon. That is a optimal view of seeing the two balloons, but we have to reorient our uh, angiographic picture to see whether the two lumens or two exit ports are facing in the different direction. For this patient, there, the aleocranial view was showing the homogeneous appearance of the two balloons and the areocaudal view was showing the rail track uh, pattern. So we took an optimal view for this stingray balloon. And once we uh, realized that uh, we were almost towards the, uh, to, pointing towards the luminal aspect or to work against the luminal aspect, we tried to introduce our um, wire, sting wire, uh, try to do the sting with the sting wire. Although it's not a recommended practice, but unfortunately the collaterals were just ipsilateral and we needed to be sure. So we gave a soft injection uh, followed by aspiration from the catheter that is known as the straw. And we could realize well in this uh, angiogram that we can see the distance of the balloon towards the true lumen on one aspect. And we can see the true lumen towards this aspect aspect and the adventitial side on the other aspect. And as we were trying to introduce the sting wire, we, it was going towards the wrong adventitial side, uh, as seen in this, these two angiograms, and it was going towards against the true lumen. So we took, uh, we directed it towards the opposite port that and tried the both the double blind sting trying it from the first port earlier and then the subsequent port. And then we were able to reach towards the true lumen, but we could notice the knuckling still happening with the um, uh, sting wire. And it was still subintimal. So we were definitely nearer, but it was an incomplete sting. And as the time was progressing, we were enlarging the subintimal space. So we needed to just complete the sting. And at this point of time, we chose uh, we changed the sting wire, which is much, much more sharper, much more having more penetration power, power. and we chose a, a alternatively less penetrating part that is pilot 150 that takes care that it does not cross the true lumen and then goes on 
to the opposite side of the subintimal space. So we could uh, finally reach the true lumen, although after a longer distance of subintimal space with the pilot 150 wire. So this is known as the stick and swap technique in which the stingray wire is exchanged with the polymer jacketed wire that tracks further into the distal true lumen and the micro catheter was advanced towards the uh, to the definite true lumen and a pre-dilatation was done in the entire length. And subsequently we took a IVUS image Again, the IVUS images were beautiful. Uh, this is the pullback at from starting from the distal most area of true lumen to the proximal mo most area of true lumen. And all through in between, we were in the false lumen. Uh, seeing the still pictures, we can see the tri-layered appearance in the true lumen in the distal portion. More proximally, it is mostly a false lumen uh, having lodging the catheter and a true lumen with the hematoma on the uh, nine o'clock aspect of the false lumen and the collapsed lumen or true lumen was between six to nine o'clock in the first angio and as we move more, more proximally it was on the at the three o'clock position so it suggested that we had created a spiral dissection as it was evident in the angiogram also but proximally we were in the true lumen and there was a significant plaque burden at the proximal lcx as well that was cyber fatty just proximal to the cto segment so we deployed the uh, DES 2.25 into 32, uh, to DES 2.5 into 38 more proximally, a POBA was done to the distal edge dissection and proximally a DES 3 into 16. And this is the final angiographic picture where we could achieve good distal flow to the distal branches. Although we lost one single branch, that was the inferior division. And it this is the post PTCA run that shows a well opposed and a well expanded stent in the distal and proximal portion and a well expanded, we can't use the term apposition in the mid part, and a well expanded stent, uh, stent in the mid part. So uh, I was uh, guided entry uh, made us more confident that we were near nearer to the true lumen in and in the subintimal space and in among in the place uh, in the algorithm for CTO crossing the dissection re-entry has got a very specific place, especially if the parallel wiring is failing and we do not spend too much of time uh, enlarging the space. And it is one of the pillars besides retrograde and anti-grade wire escalation approach. And in contrast to parallel wiring, especially if the first wire is in the sub-intimal intra-plaque location and we have a good re-entry zone and it is 0.5 or 1 millimeters nearer to the true lumen, we can uh, try to use it upfront after a uh, short time uh, tracking the subintimal space. And um, in this case, Ivers and Stingray saved the day and it we should probably plan a could have planned a earlier switch switch to stingray especially when we were realizing that the lesion length was approximately more than 20 millimeters i was helped us guide our proximal cap puncture document the true lumen both proximally and distally once we and achieved so wiring we can and, we can have this in the, okay yeah, you, you yeah, have understand yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. thank you very much thank you. okay so that was really wonderful tanuj it was really wonderful how to use a stingray and uh, I've done a few cases with Stingray initially, but uh, uh, so I think we can have a discussion. So I think Dr. Call will be, uh, you know, assigned Dr. Call for a discussion on this. Suresh? I don't know if he's not around. Okay. So Tanuj, it was wonderful. Uh, you know, if one keeps on thinking that one is into a subintimal space, but into the alignment of a vessel, not going really out. That is the first message to start considering to use string ray. So first, I think check in all orthogonal views, rather not two, but three different views, whether, uh, see, from the moment, from uh, the comfort of advancement, you will come to know whether uh, whether that, vessel, that uh, wire is into the true lumen or false lumen. So you know it's not into the true lumen, but then you keep checking in various views that you are in alignment to the vessel wall. This is the first prerequisite of start considering to use, thinking to consider to use string ring. So then I think uh, Tanuj really showed it wonderfully well 
uh, how to use stingray it has various uh, markers that uh, one marker a distal marker where the wire is supposed to come out should be heading towards the inside of the lumen rather than outside and but still you keep checking when once your wire comes out whether it is going towards uh, the true lumen or the vessel or it's uh, pointing towards the opposite direction if it is pointing towards the opposite direction you don't advance but if it is you are sure then you can try various wires i think that's the wonderful thing which i like the most still uh, with the string wire which is a tougher wire it was showing knuckling so it was again entering into uh, just extending your subintimal space by changing the wire taking a softer wire even i have seen operators going for fielder xts and trying uh, softer wires because you just require a small prick and through that prick then if the wire enters into a true lumen uh, that's that's going to be the winning movement yes. so overall that decision i like the most in your case that you change the still and you kept the fight on you you kept fight <laughs> that's the best so we stopped three times in between but when we were realizing that we were going closer and closer to the true lumen that point we thought we'll give it one more try one more try such like fights only make a case worth it you know so, so. the radiation was approximately 5.2 gray so we were just touching the border also so but we it was just 0.2 gray more than the recommendation uh, so so such like cases like like winning a world cup you know so suresh is back so, so uh, wonderfully wonderfully we assign you for this case if you if you heard of this case I, i had to attend a call at hospital sir i'm sorry i, had, I was 5 minutes away but okay. i saw his i saw his uh, presentation dude it was wonderfully uh, done and uh, it, it is a learning for all, for especially for us because we don't have oct at our place i was at uh, our place is uh, on call like we do cases every 3 months workshops and then we call why was rota even rota is not available at our place so it has been uh, uh, 11 years and only fluoroscopy and uh, that's it no, no, we we to keep following you dot call you are doing a wonderful stuff uh, you know uh, despite uh, limited resources or whatever you say Thank but you, i think that the the work you are doing is really fantastic but but we What? try to try to do whatever we can sir in the best possible way and so that and don't look at acute results i have always believed give, you should be comparable with surgery at 5 years that is the kind of no, result no, i think i think your insight is wonderful into the subject i really adore it and one you, more thing sir which finally yes. so there is a new system coming up which is very comparable and almost similar to stringray but much simpler okay sir. so this might be uh, i think they are putting it into this euro pcr Okay. Uh, and it might be commercial in next six months in India. Uh, I haven't seen that, but I heard of that. It actually makes the steps highly simpler. So that will be uh, maybe a big boost towards the CTO openings from the integrated side. And we know that if we have some simpler things, we may be opening much and much uh, more CTOs, uh, which at times we uh, do not think, or or at least at times we fail also. so but this this was a wonderful wonderful case tanuj thank i really like that thank you sir. there was just one in, one inquisitive question for you it is just a query that uh, what do you do with your patients when you are going through for all this patiently you know you're doing it how do you uh, manage your patients if things are not going your way especially uh, in ctos yeah so i think cto is more uh, more or less a temperamental affair one has to be temperamentally very good the problem here with us is we are uh, doing huge volumes so if you come in the morning and see that uh, five or six plasties are lined up your temperament goes down yeah, there absolutely. so uh, i think if you one has to plan ctos it should be you know one should start thinking that four At hours is enough for this case only sure. then you score a best chance of opening a cto if you think i should open this in one hour uh, <clears throat> then it's a half hearted approach and you may not be successful so from the word go one should be mentally uh, very clear that i have to devote a huge time for this and try out all the hardware one more thing i think uh, the best case scenario is start a cto with the seven french guide and uh, the corsair catheter along with so always all japanese it's a it's a it's a game plan they don't even think 
of doing a CTO without these things, you know. So, and then IVAS, they keep on doing IVASs, they keep on doing all this stuff. So, uh, it has to be in your mind that four hours reserved for this case. Only, only that way you can win over the CTOs. So, which route do you prefer, radial or femoral for the CTOs? The CTOs usually femoral, okay. usually femoral because uh, one, you know, if you are thinking of retrograde, then obviously radial will come into play. But uh, it's a clear cut seven French system, uh, tough system. But I am not uh, denying uh, radial uh, things also. Uh, 60, 70 percent CTOs are still amenable to good radial interventionists. It's again in mind, you know. So seven French, as Dr. Paul was mentioning, we can easily have a sheathless seven French. That's not a big deal. And uh, we have done a few, uh, although not very, very simple ones, retrograde. And you, we have used both radials, left and right. So it is, you can yeah. do that. So I think it's, it's, it's as per one's comfort. It's as, especially, yeah, that's right. Great. But once you're so going I, to do CD, you must have the IVAS or OCT at your center. Yeah, yeah. So that is one point. Imaging is very important. I think no, we have been doing without that. And, 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 and keep showing up here yeah. and keep presenting cases. This is Thank for all sir. of us. Thank you, sir. Dr. Okay. Tony, this is definitely a very wonderful case. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So let's move ahead with the next case.